Welcome to the last part of this tutorial for making Flappy Bird in Godot. This video will finish up the game and it will look like this when we're done. We'll be adding the points collection and setting up the UI elements at the end, including some little animations. So let's not waste any time and just get on with it. Let us first start with collecting points. But before we do that, let me just remove this printout here to the console. That was just for development purposes. So away with that. Okay, so to collect the points, what we want to do is to add a second area 2D with a collision shape here between the pipes. And then for the bird as well, we want to have a another area 2D here. And then we'll use that to collect the points and register when the bird is flying between the pipes. And also we want to have a score variable in the global scene. So let's just create that one first here so i'll say here var score and i'll set that to zero and we go to the bird here and then we'll add another area 2d here area 2d and i'll rename this to something uh better so we can more clearly refer to it later i'll just call this points area and then i'll add a collision shape 2d and i'll use a circle shape as before and then just drag it and resize it like so and now we don't want this to register when we are colliding with the pipes or the ground so we will use another uh, collision layer for this so i'll go here into the points area and under collision here i'll choose not this layer but layer two here so we won't go into the difference between these two, but I'll just select both of them. And what you can do also is to rename these layers. And then we go into the projects here under project settings and scroll down here to uh, layer names, 2D physics. And then I'll just rename this points like this. And then we can see this is the points uh, collision layer. All right, let's do the same with the pipes. Uh, go to the pipes here and we'll add another area 2D. And, T, and I'll call this as well points area. And I'll add a collision shape. And I'll choose a rectangle shape. And I'll resize this a little bit. And I'll just drag this to the end of the pipe here, like this. And then we need to put the right collision layer as well. The points layer here, like that. And then we go into the bird and hook that all up. So I'll go here in the script and in the ready function here. Uh, we'll write here points point area dot connect and the signal is area entered and itself and I'll call this function on point collected and I'll need to make this function down here down here func on point collected and we need to remember to write here area 2D, otherwise it won't work. And then I will just increase the score variable in the globals by one. And for now, I'll just print the score to the console now. Uh, sorry, the globals, of course, like that. And then let's run that and see if it works. Okay, so we see here we got one point. Yep, so that's good. Only thing now is that the score didn't reset when we restarted, so let's just fix that quickly. So we're going the main here in the restart game, and then uh, we'll just set the score here to zero, like that. 
of course we want the score to show on the screen while we're playing so let's fix that so to do that i'll go to the main and i'll create a, a ui container node here of like a simple basic node and i'll rename that to ui and later i'll put the end screen with the high score and all that in here as well but for now i'll just create here a label which will hold the score like that and let's zoom in here a little bit so let's look at the position of this uh, so first of all i want this to fill the entire width of the screen here so i'll go in here to the rect and i will put in here for minimum size 450 because that's the width of the screen like that and then i'll move this 200 and 25 pixels to the left because that's half of 450 like that and then let's just put in here some text blah 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 okay so now you see it's aligned to the left so i'll need to align that to center and then i want this as well to be a little bit up so i put minus 200 here so i think that is okay okay then and obviously we don't want this font here so let us make another font and to do that let's first go here and create a new folder and i'll call this resources and in this folder i'll create a new resource like this and i want this to be a dynamic font like that and then I'll just call this score font like this. And then I'll go here to the font. And for here for font, I'll uh, choose a new dynamic font data here like this. And then I need the path for the font. And I got this here in the assets. So I'll use this ka1.ttf. And I'll just copy the path here and paste that in here like that. And then I go to the settings here and I want this to be 32 like that. Okay, so let's just go here to the label and I'll scroll down here to custom fonts and then I've, I'll find the font that I created, the score font and I'll drag this over here. Okay, so good now. Now this looks a bit not contrasty, so I want a black outline around that. So I want to go into the font here and I'll go into the outline size and color and I choose here black like that. And then I want an outline here for, let's say four. So that looks better like that. And then for the label here, I'll just put as a text here zero like that okay and then let's go into the main script here and update the score label so we'll just do that now in the process function here for a larger and more complex game than this you probably don't want to do it like this maybe you want to uh, emit a signal instead and just do it once now we're going to be doing it every frame but for a small game like this it's not going to be an issue so let's just be pragmatic here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write here ui.label.text is equal to the globals.score but because we need to convert this into a string we need to put here str around this so let's just see if that works now okay so we got zero points one point, two points, okay. And then it resets, so that's good. And of course, we only want the score to show when we are in playing state. When we are in pre-game state, we don't want anything to show. And when we're in dead state, we want the score to be replaced by the end the UI thing in which the high score is also shown. So let's just go uh, here and then I'll uh, right here if global da -da 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 game state is equal to playing I will set the UI label visible equals true otherwise 
I will set that to false. like that so this will look like this now so the score is not showing and when we start playing it will show here and then when we crash it will disappear and then this will be replaced by something else and that's something else we'll create just now here under the ui i'll create a new child node and this time i want this to be a sprite because i want that to be the background of this uh, little menu uh, like that and then I will use this image called scoreboard.png and I'll just drag this over to texture and under import here I'll just uh, untick filter like that and re-import to make it crisper and then I will scale it up by three so we did before and uh, I guess that's a good position. So let's just leave it there. All right, let's just go to the scene now and I'll uh, rename this and I'll call it scoreboard. And then I need to add two labels to this, which are gonna be the score and the high score. Uh, a label and I'll call this score label and another one. And I'll call this high score label. Okay, and this one I'll move a little bit up. Here, let's say minus 10 or minus 13. Okay, and then this sprite here is 35 pixels wide, so I need to subtract half of that here. Minus 7.5. Should put it in the middle and I'll put this uh, size here to 35 like that. So we might need to adjust this a little bit later. Let's take this one, put it a little bit down. Uh, let's see, five down and then here 35. I put the minimum size as well and this one minus 17 and a half. All right. So let us now just enter here zero and same thing for the other one here zero and we want the font as well to be changed so i go here to custom fonts there and i'll find the font that i had here <clears throat> And when I drag this over here, we see that it's way too big. And that's because this is scaled by a factor of three now. So then I need to create a new font. Um, so I'll just do that here, a new resource, dynamic font. And I'll just call this scoreboard font like that. Go into here, font, here, new font dynamic font data like this and I'll copy the path here and paste it back in here like that and then for settings here uh, I think 10 will be good and the outline I'm going to try for one like that and then I go back to the score label here and I drag the new font in here so that looks better and then I want to uh, align this to the center like that and then I just move it a little bit up minus 14 maybe yep and for this one I'll drag this font as well over in here scoreboard font like that and then to center it align it to the center as well like that yeah so let's just leave it like that so now let's go into the main here and we will set when this is visible so this is going to be visible only when we are in dead state so if the globals.game state is equal to dead uh, we will be showing the scoreboard visible is equal to true otherwise 
it will be not visible and also let us just let us just update the score as well scoreboard score label is equal to str global dot score like that okay let's try and run this and see if this works now okay good Yeah, so that works fine. The only thing now is we need to fix the high score. So let's then go into the globals here and create a high score variable first. High score, set that to zero. And then in the bird here, we will do like this. Let's first remove this and then we will check if the score is greater than the high score, then we will set the high score to the score so if the globals dot score is greater than the globals dot high score we will set the globals high score equal to 